Chrysler and Standard Oil, Henry Ford's company, and many concerns including Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, General Motors, Boeing, Western Union, and AT&T. The Passeur's Empire Bank of Lancaster became the North Carolina Bank and then Nations Bank, which has now become Bank of America. Another trustee of the Passeur family was frontman J.P. Morgan. Two books that detail these hidden alliances are David Icke's The Biggest Secret and Jim Marr's Rule by Secrecy. Rockefeller, with this additional financing, incorporated Standard Oil Company of Ohio in 1870 and then formed a new partnership which included Henry Flagler and Jay Gould. Flagler and Gould's railroad industry connections helped Rockefeller when Gould created the Allegheny Transportation Company for moving crude oil to standard in the most cost-efficient manner by increasing the capacity of their trains to haul oil and by monopolistically gaining control of all crude oil transportation the cabal became unspeakably powerful. An economic depression began in 1873 with the collapse of international banker Jay Cook and Company that allowed Rockefeller to swoop in and buy up scores of bankrupt companies with oil field assets and oil refiners at pennies on the dollar dramatically increasing Standard Oil's cash flow. By 1875, only eight years after his buyout of Clark, the ruthless Rockefeller controlled nearly 80% of the oil distribution in the United States by one, limiting crude oil drilling and production, and two, limiting the amount of oil being refined in order to inflate the price of all oil products. Rockefeller controlled roughly 75% of all of the oil refining in the world when in 1879 Standard Oil set its sights on the Russian Baku oil fields. By 1880, Rockefeller owned or controlled 95% of all oil produced in the United States. The railroads, which had been the titans of commerce up until that time, fell to Rockefeller's leveraged power, as did gradually the government of the United States which was manipulated by Rockefeller through his vast wealth and influence. The single greatest power in American industry had congealed. Standard Oil, controlled by one single man, John D. Rockefeller, whose evil business practices led mothers to warn their children to behave, or Rockefeller will get you. Having a stranglehold over the petroleum and kerosene industry for nearly 50 years gave Rockefeller unchecked power over the citizens of the United States, power greater than wielded by U.S. presidents, military generals, or any other captains of industry. By 1887, Standard Oil replaced the Bell Telephone Company as the largest corporation in America. Rockefeller made and broke as many political careers as he absorbed bankrupt oil companies, and for all intents and purposes, he had Capitol Hill in his hip pocket. Had Congress managed to set forth anti-monopoly legislation and restraints on the oil industry during those years and enforced such legislation, the course of our industrial development may have progressed less monopolistically. But after 50 years, which were early in the development of our young democracy, Rockefeller and his cabal were exerting a totalitarian influence over the economy and political direction of the United States. Considering the fact that Germany evolved as a center of banking dynasties with armies of mercenaries for hire, it is curious that in Nuremberg in 1561 there were great sightings of cylindrical cigar-shaped UFOs as depicted in this 1561 Nuremberg broadsheet. It is also curious the nearly identical sightings of cigar-shaped UFOs occurred in Texas just before the spindle-top oil discovery in Beaumont, Texas at the turn of the 20th century, which proved that Texas rested upon an ocean of oil. Curious because this conjunction of oil, banking, and military control, and UFOs would become dominant themes in the middle of the 20th century. The great airship mystery of 1896 and 97 began on November 17, 1896, when several hundred residents of Sacramento, California observed a giant oblong airship. As the months went by, sightings were later made by thousands of other witnesses across the United States, some of whom noted speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour, much faster than any